we had very different money mindsets. So for me, my relationship with money was a little loose. We had a very, <laughs> had a loose relationship, you know, kind of here, there goes with the flow. <laughs> Growing up, I didn't really have someone telling me how to budget and things like that. I just knew that I needed to work very hard for all the things that I wanted in life. You know, I grew up where I couldn't always have the things that I wanted. And if I wanted it, I had to work hard to, to get it. But no one told me that I need to budget for these things. So I don't know for all my uh, millennials born in the 90s, 2000s-ish, if you were like 15 or 16, Around that time, it was that Nokia cell phone <laughs> that was out. It was teeny tiny like that. It had snake on it. You know what I'm talking about. So I really wanted that cell phone. Um, and luckily, my grandparents got it for me for Christmas. However, they said, if you want this cell phone, we got you on that. But we're not paying your bill. Nope, like no That sir. is something that you have to figure out on your own. We'll start you off with your minutes just to, you know, get you get you by for a while. But then after that, you were on your own. So I was like, shoot, I need to figure out how I'm going to be able to keep this cell phone on. So I got a job, my very first job when I was like 14. However, <laughs> again, I wasn't budgeting or anything like that. So I would just blow my money willy nilly. And of course, the habits that you have, or that you adopt at a young age will carry over if you don't make a mindset change right so in college right. it was the same way kind of just like i had jobs never had a problem making money the problem was i was spending keeping it. it keeping it yes i wasn't thinking about saving i wasn't thinking about budgeting i just knew that it was something that i wanted and i'm an impulsive shopper i'm getting better but I'm impulsive shopper so i would just spend money and the next thing you know you look up and you're like how do how am i broke like Mm. Or how do I not have the money that I thought that I had? Like, right. where did it go so fast? And because I wasn't budgeting or tracking or anything like that, I had no idea. Um, also, too, I wasn't preparing for the unexpected. And so my mindset when it came to money was very different um, than Shane's. And thankfully, with time and with great communication over the years, um, we're now on the same page. But your girl was your girl was loose. She was out <laughs> here just like she was loose with it. Yeah, like uh, I'm just gonna blow it because I got it. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that story. Of course, <laughs> I know the story already. Um, but as far as my personal relationship with money and growing up, my mindset with money, it was different from hers. But we had similar stories. Yeah, we both come from humble beginnings. And I grew up with my aunt. She was on disability, so she wasn't really making too much money. And having the lack of money and seeing the lack of money on a month-to-month -month basis and not her not being able to uh, afford certain things or go on vacations and things like that, it really started to register in my mind the importance of money. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at money a little bit differently at an early age, like 14, 15, 16 years old. Uh, I got my first job around when I was 16. And instead of every time I got a check, I wasn't thinking, oh, okay, it's time to go to the mall, go spend this on some clothes, mm -hmm. or go to the ice cream, uh, ice cream truck every time it came by. That wasn't my thinking. My thinking was, okay, I'm going to save this money and maybe put 20 or $30 towards something that I want. And I did that at an early age. And just yeah, you that, were a super saver at an early age. Ju <laughs> just that type of uh, conditioning of, of my mind when it comes to my financial thinking, it has carried over year after year into my 20s and into my 30s. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think it's so important for uh, people to get that education early on. And as far as the cell phone story, my I, I've kind of got a similar story too, but I had to pay for my own phone too, just like you, yeah. but I didn't get my first cell phone until I was 18 years old. I was a senior in high school until I got my first yeah, uh, cell phone. Yeah, you were a little late to the game. I was a little late <laughs> to the game, and that's because Aunt Pam said, if you want a phone, oh, you're going to pay for it yourself. Yeah. I ne Every bill that I've ever had, I never had help, and I think that's really helped me over the years. Have it, having that instilled in me from an early age and Aunt Pam saying, 
hey, if you want something, you got to go get it yourself. I think that really made the difference in me to say, okay, I understand that I have to make a living for myself right. and it's not going to be on anybody else. It's, it can't be on Aunt Pam. It can't be on my mom. It can't be on any other family member. It can't be yeah. on my friend. It can't yeah. be on my girlfriend. It has to be on me. And I, yeah. that is what the mindset that I always had and carried that over all yeah. the way up until now. And mm -hmm. I think that's the difference. I definitely think that is what made the difference and for the better, you know, you were one of the lucky ones that not to say lucky because you put in the work. So it, luck had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. It was all your discipline and hard work that um, ultimately paid off. When it comes to us as a couple, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's our, it's hard enough to manage money and get that mindset right when it comes to financial well-being by yourself but yeah. to do it as a couple is a whole nother thing it takes work and i think uh for the first couple of years of our relationship that wasn't even a topic i no. mean <laughs> i mean we got together when we were 20 years old sophomores yeah. uh sophomores actually well it was sophomore year after sophomore Go year yeah going, going into, into junior, junior year. year yeah it was so, like the summer going into junior year so the first couple of years of our relationship we never even talked about it. It wasn't yeah. even it wasn't even a, a topic of discussion. Yeah, and no. I think it wasn't until we moved in together in 2013, yes. around 23 years old, that mm -hmm. we really started to uh, because we realized like, oh, we're sharing like financial responsibility with right, each other. Right. Like, we have to make sure we're somewhat on this that we're on the same page when it comes to financial decisions. So it wasn't discussed at all, but it was. Learned very early on uh, after living with each other that we had very different money mindsets. We did. Um, but I think that adversity and that grit that we went through in our relationship is very necessary for any long lasting relationship. Mm -hmm. And the subject around having a, a good financial mindset is probably one of the biggest struggles or biggest challenges that we've had in our relationship because... Yeah. When it comes to your mindset, it's not something that you can change overnight. Overnight, It's yeah, not no. something that you can change in the next month. These are mm -hmm. things that internally you have to start changing right. and start adapting and start mm -hmm. building better habits and mm -hmm. things like that. And that's the whole reason why we're having uh, this conversation yeah. today because we want to help other people get on the same page yeah. as what we had to do early on, yeah. um, whether you're an individual or whether you're mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for uh, two people that are joining in, in a, in in a, a marriage or in a yeah. partnership mm -hmm. for them to be on the same page uh, financially mm -hmm. and just have, you know, similar mindsets. I mean, but it doesn't have to be, you yeah. know, uh, it, you can't. Together. I, yeah, I, I would agree. It doesn't have to be together because I, you have two different mindset so it's very hard to just have one person shift and be like the other person and vice versa and I think that is how we learned and that's how we were able to get on the same page uh, definitely I would say the number one thing that helped us get on the same page is communication mm. you have to communicate and as we mentioned earlier we were not communicating at all about finances so it was kind of like a bit of a shock when we did have to have these conversations and they didn't always go so well every time because one person felt like, oh, you're trying to make me just like you and that's not fair. And the right. other person felt like, well, I feel like you want me to be like you when it comes to making financial decisions and that's not fair. So we had to have a lot of conversations and I, whether they were good or not so good, they were healthy conversations. Yes. And, and over time it got better. Yeah. And we learned that we can be different when it comes to making certain financial decisions, but we have to communicate and we have to make sure that we compromise and meet each other in the middle because what I do affects Shane and what Shane does financially affects me. So we want to make sure that we are, um, you know, both on board with having the same mindset and habits, but also acknowledging that we may be a little different when it comes to the things that we like to spend our money on, how often we want to spend our money. Like Shane likes to save a little bit more than I do, but I still have a budget. He still has a budget. And what I may want to spend money on may be very different for him. Yeah. So just coming together and at one, acknowledging that and setting expectations when it comes to that and then working day in and day out 
um, to make sure that we're meeting each other's needs. And so, so let yeah. me let me ask you this, and mm-hmm. I think this is a good segue into the next next area around this. Mm-hmm. So, how did we make each other better? How did I make you better mm-hmm. from a financial mindset standpoint? Mm-hmm. That is a great question. I would say that you made me better because you made me realize that just because I have something, it doesn't mean that I have to spend it. Um, I learned how to have structure and um, set boundaries when it comes to money. And I think that is very important because so many things happen will happen in life, whether you've experienced it now or maybe later. And you have to have some sort of financial structure to prepare for that. Yeah. Um, no one will, knows what will happen. And if you're not prepared for the unexpected, you can be in a lot of trouble. And unfortunately, I was in situations where I was not prepared for the unexpected. And it was very difficult. Um, but having you and having those conversations and you teaching me the importance of that, I think that has that is what made me better and I move so differently now when it comes to making decisions and even when you are able to get something that you work so hard for is that much more rewarding because you know you put in the work for it yeah and so I think and stay disciplined and exactly and make sure that you know I was disciplined and did what I was supposed to do so that when I was able to finally get whatever that goal is or item, what have you, it was that much more rewarding. So I think that's what um, you did that made me better. You helped me to understand discipline and um, setting up my future. You helped me understand that it is very important to have financial security. And so those are some of the things that I'm very grateful for that you have instilled in me. Right. Well, I, and what about you? I definitely appreciate that. For me, how you made me better is you made me realize that it's okay to spend. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said early on in this video, my mindset, I wanted to save, save, save mm-hmm. so that it, it, it was a sense of security for me. It was a sense of okay, I I, want to save for a rainy day, but I want to save some more on top of that rainy day. Yeah. Um, So you were saving for a monsoon. (laughs) (laughs) I was was saving for a tsunami. (laughs) Basically. I'm going to take a sip on that one. (laughs) But you made it okay to say, it's all right to go out to dinner. Mm -hmm. It's, It's okay to go out and travel the world. And these are things that I was doing already. I was, I, it's not like I, I never traveled or mm-hmm, I never mm-hmm. ate out or I never spent money on myself. I did, but she made it more acceptable to say, okay, enjoy your money too. Yeah. And I think that's very important because we all work so hard. We all want to accumulate. And when it comes to how you helped me, you helped me make it okay to spend money and to enjoy my money and enjoy mm-hmm. the hard work mm-hmm. and the and the labor that I put in. Right. It also has brought many great opportunities and great things that we've been able to do together, like yeah. skydiving and stuff yeah. like that. I would have never done that if it yeah. wasn't for you and travel to places that we've traveled to. Yeah. And traveling to Colombia and yeah. Belize and things like that. I mean I like I did that because you have helped me in a way with enjoying my money. And I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. So that's how you helped me. Um, When it comes to mindset overall, I think the closing point that we really want to make is that your financial picture, your financial success doesn't start with how much money you make. It's really about your financial mindset of how you are thinking about money and how you're thinking about saving and how you're thinking about being disciplined Mm -hmm. and taking some sacrifices when you need to. When you need to, yep. And also enjoying it when you need to as well. Exactly. So having that healthy balance. 